that. Thanks a lot for your time, sir. Um, you've been saying that the case, the state's case, is weak in this matter, and you've been voting for nothing. Um, how do you feel now? You are almost there. Well, uh, it was very disappointing that the state had to surrender to the pressure of the Afri Forum. The state must always act independently and uh, must not be biased and should never favor especially racist organizations like uh, Afri Forum. So we are disappointed that an institution that has got a constitutional obligation to act independently and without being intimidated found itself reduced into insignificant institution in this court where uh, they've got no case against us to a point where accused number two did not see a need to take a stand because he has not been implicated by any of the witnesses or evidence uh, before this court. Uh, but when we joined the struggle, we knew this is part of the journey uh, we're going to travel. Uh, we are not complaining, we got an opportunity to present our side of the story and uh, we hope that uh, the court will arrive at a proper conclusion. And um, you were quite bold in saying that the Afri Forum is after you, after your family, after your dignity. Why? Why do you think they are after you? The Afri Forum is threatened by anyone who is advocating for a seat on the table for African people. Once you advocate a struggle for Africans to be equal to the white men, you become the enemy of Afri Forum, whose interest is to defend and protect white privilege. And that's why at every turn, when they get an opportunity to discredit the leadership of the EFF, they do so even when they've got uh, no evidence. So uh, the court should have known them for who they are and, and refused to prosecute, and they've got a right to privately prosecute us, uh, which then becomes a cost on both sides. We have had to waste a lot of money coming here for the lawyers. What if I had sold my house to get the best lawyers to represent me? My children will be on the streets on matters that, when properly canvassed before the court, a prosecutor should have said, I'm not going to prosecute on this matter. We brought Larry Mabunda, not now, during 174, the prosecutor said in his argument against 174 that had he known the facts he knows now about Larry Mabunda, he would have charged him. That was the end of the case. He did not charge him. It's too late to charge him. He should have just retreated from that case and abandoned the case if he was objective. But we are where we are because you can't persecute people uh, without facts. And Mr. Mabunda is not persecuted still. Um, do you think no, he's is, not prosecuted. Do you think this is the ways of for the state to protect itself? Well, uh, had they uh, prosecuted Mabunda, there are a lot of questions they were asking us which Mabunda would have answered uh, as to why the cartridge was found there, uh, whether the firearm really arrived here or not. Because one of the things I remember about Mabunda is that it looks like we traveled in the same plane on that day, SAA, and it doesn't allow rifles, SAA, inside it. So uh, there are a lot of, and for sure, when they looked at those facts, they realized they were not going to pass the test uh, with Mabunda. So then you charge Adrian because you assumed Adrian is the owner of the company. The facts when get presented now, they actually exposed that he was not owning the company at the time. There was a person responsible uh, for uh, such licensing of those uh, uh, firearms. In an extremely embarrassing manner, you see the prosecutor trying to place Adrian, the white man, into the scene of crime. And he dismally fails because off camera, as we enter into the camera, it's me and Larry Mabunda following me. When I'm busy there, Larry Mabunda is coming more closer. When I'm about to now turn back and hand over the firearm to him, the white man comes. And he says no. Uh, at that point, the white man overtook Larry. I said to him, you are the one who brought the video. 
play and stop where the white man is appearing. He couldn't. He couldn't place the white man at the scene of crime. So it was so embarrassing to have such a video with yourself for six years. You still want to look at it for 30 minutes before the court, a demonstration of unpreparedness of this prosecutor. Thank you. Yes. But overall, what seemingly seems to be maybe um, things that were overlooked uh, by, you know, in the statements or in the evidence, like in September, some of the testimony that was given by Colonel Swartoy and another SAPS member, mm. part of the forensic team. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your reaction to that? You know, uh, what happened here is an act of racism. So when Afri Forum picked up an opportunity. Uh, to persecute me, they made sure the matter is in a white prosecutor. The prosecutor was white. When they could not pass through with the white prosecutor, then they went to a colored, but maintained a white magistrate. Because if you get any minorities on his case, there is no way they are going to leave him alone. They will pursue him. And that's what transpired. The investigating officer, officer Swarboy, colored, a uh, governor, Indian. There were so many minorities on my case with the hope that these minorities will pin him down, inspired purely by hatred and racism. That's why I said to the magistrate, they thought if they get a white judge, because they were judge Hopi, they will find a racist judge who will not have mercy. Uh, uh, for this guy. So the whole thing just failed. Why would an honest prosecutor not tell the magistrate that there were five police officers who were looking after this guy on that day? Five of them. They go and collect statements from them, keep them secret, and not bring them to the attention of the magistrate. When in cross-examination, defense brings them to the attention of the magistrate, and one seven for application, the magistrate said, no, this issue of subs being there, uh, I don't have much to say about it, except that maybe the state at some point will have something to say. She got shocked by cross-examination that subs was there. They bring subs statements today. I don't know why they did that. They bring subs, I mean, subs statement. They don't bring subs uh, officers. And then they read the statement themselves into the record. No single statement of the police say this guy did anything unlawful. So what was the point of bringing those statements here when they are not implicating us? So all of that combined, you can see that uh, it's, a, it's a concocted charges uh, which are inspired by hatred and racism and uh, the inability to defeat a person politically. And then you use the other means, including persecution. It's unfortunate the NPA allowed itself to be used uh, in this regard. Are you happy with the conduct of the magistrate this time around because the last time you laid there has been competent? I'm not. I'm not happy with the, uh, the magistrate, but there's nothing I can do. It's the court. You need to ask a question yourself as journalist. When ballistic experts of the police was brought before the same magistrate. The magistrate never asked the ballistic expert of the police whether he's got a signature of the peer review. When our ballistic expert was brought to the case, he was told he does not have a peer review signature. The magistrate asked the question, what must I take this evidence for in the absence of the peer review? Why didn't she ask that question to the ballistics of SAPS, which did not have the same uh, 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 peer review signature? So the same way she's going to view the SAPS ballistics report in the absence of uh, ballistics is the same way she must view ours. They all enjoy the same status. And I don't understand why police brought that, I mean, prosecutor brought that to the attention of the magistrate to say, but you don't have a peer review signature. Where is the peer review signature? 
our advocate was good enough to point it to them and through our ballistics. Did their nine ballistics report have a peer review signature? Two. No answer. They don't have signatures. This is the same magistrate. In a clever way, I told you today, I said the same court never asked the state ballistics whether they've got peer review, but you can ask ours as whether he's got a ballistic, I mean, a peer review. And today I'm happy they call him an expert. Yesterday, had this not been exposed that they don't have a peer review signature, yesterday they wanted to disregard him and treat him as an entity who's not qualified expert because he does not have a peer review. Same magistrate.